Open browsers, log into websites and handle credentials in a nice and secure way. That is all something we do as RPA developers and we do it every day. So make sure you get this right. Open a browser, that's easy. Fill in the fields, that might also be easy, but handle credentials in a secure way, that can be difficult for someone. And as you can see, it's difficult for me because I type my credentials in a notepad. Don't ever do that, but this was just for this example. I'll delete it afterward and I'll make sure I change my password. Our use case today is that we want to log into Instagram in Microsoft Edge using these credentials. And afterward, we will first we'll create a solution with Windows Credential Manager and then as assets in Orchestrator. But we'll do it step by step. So just open up UiPath and do the things with me. We will take it nice and slowly. I'll hold your hand. Don't worry. Let me maximize this. So if I just drag it over here, and by the way, my name is Anas Jensen. Let's learn some UI path. So here I create a process. We could call it whatever we want. I'll just say my login procedure. And feel free to change the browser from Edge to Firefox, for example, and choose another site than Instagram. So here I just click create with the default settings. We want to make sure uh, two things. First, we want to make sure that you actually have the browser extension installed. So if you didn't see what I did, I click the home up here, then I click tools and install the Edge extension. And if you chose the Firefox, make sure you install the Firefox instead. Click OK a couple of times. Edge will restart, as you can see here. And uh, if I go to Instagram, that will be our start site. Uh, let me show you up here. Uh, you can see that the UiPath Web Automation extension has been installed. We can now use UiPath with Microsoft Edge. Another thing we want to make sure, let me go uh, back to my project here. I open my way in workflow. We will use an use application browser. If you don't see this, that is because you haven't enabled the modern design experience. Make sure to do so. Do it by clicking the link in the upper right corner and then come back to this video. But if you see this, everything is fine. We will now use it. So I drag it in. Here we need to indicate an application to automate. And that was exactly our Microsoft Edge. So if I click here and you can see that Microsoft Edge turned green and it even says application. Just left click with your mouse and UiPath has automatically uh, chosen that we are using Microsoft Edge with this URL. We have now created our robot that can navigate to a website. Um, let me show you and it can actually also open the browser. So if I run the robot by clicking this drop down, click run file, you'll see that we are opening up Edge, navigating to Instagram and boom, it disappears. Why? Well, we need to change one setting. So if you are still here, make sure it's blue, go over to the properties. And if you don't see the properties, just click the properties down here, it will show. So in options, close, click this drop down and choose never. That is, we will never close the browser after our automation is done. You often want to close it because when the robot has run, you have you don't want the browser to be open. So we'll close it. But here it's more convenient if it stays open. So I'll choose never. And in spe especially in develop the development phase, we want to have it stay open to, to see and verify that we're actually doing the things that we want. So now if you run it, click the drop down here, run the file again. We can see that the robot do exactly like we want. So now go back to UiPath. The next thing that we want to do, we want to start filling in the fields. It's very easy. Just find a type into up here in activities. So type into and drag it in. Here I need to indicate, uh, you can see that we are in Edge Instagram. So I just click here and then I can uh, choose all uh, fields or actually all sorts of other elements. It wouldn't make sense to send text here, but it could do so. I will send my text to the phone number, username or email address. So I left click and then this select editor here. I will just click confirm. UiPath automatically have uh, created the selector address for me here. I don't do to do nothing. Best practice is to rename the activities because if something go wrong at some point and you want to look into the lab, 
uh, naming an activity called type into input doesn't say something. Uh, you'll have a lot of activities named that. You cannot uh, easily see where it went wrong. So double click this and instead of input, we could say username. Uh, let me just be sure I'm in the right place like this. I'll just say username. Now we need to type something in. We can just do it down here. We can say type this, text must be quoted. We can do so by say Anders Jensen org. But a better practice would be to create a variable with this value in. So delete this then press Ctrl K. That will create a new variable still in this field. Then we need to call it something. Call it whatever you want. A good practice again is to say str, that is a string. Um, in that way, we can easily recognize what sort of variable it is. It's not mandatory, it's just something that is nice to do. And then we can name the variable. So I'll just say username, descripting name. Then I click enter. We have now created our variable. And again, feel free to call it whatever you want. You don't need to write str, you can call it whatever you want. But if I go to variables, we have now created our variable. It's called str username of the variable type string, and there's no default value in it. But let's give it a value. So here I put in quotation marks, and then I say org like this. Now I can click the variable again, and we have now created another step in our awesome automation. So I close down the web browser, and then we run the automation again. So now we are coming to Instagram and you can see we're actually filling out the username. Now we just need the password and then they click on the login button. So uh, again, we minimize it and we just uh, do it with another type into. So I drag this one in. Here I need to indicate the field again, same procedure as last year. So I click here and I click the password. Now my select editor again comes and then I can click confirm. So now we have the password field. I will change uh, the name of the activity up here to type into password. First, we will create it in a non-secure way, and then we will use the credential management afterward. First, we will just need to copy the password here, and we will hard code in the password. Again, don't ever do that. Go down here, paste in the password. You can see that Europath actually trying to tell us this is a password, this is a password, but it can be seen by clicking this I. So not a solution we want, but for now it's good. It's uh, nice to see that our automation can run. So if I close down the edge again, I can run my automation. And now uh, we have actually putting in the username and the password. If you didn't see it, we did it. We just need to click login. So back to UI path. Then find a click activity. It's here under application, drag it in. And this is very easy. Again, we just need to indicate it in edge. Um, here you can choose the click type. That will be a single click, not a double click. The mouse button that is left, for example, not the right, but you can choose it if your apps requires otherwise. But I just click here, indicate in edge, Instagram. Then I choose the nice blue button, left click with the mouse, confirm in my selector manager. And now we have that. It's named click login. That is a nice name, so we won't change it. Let me close down the Edge browser and run our automation again. So here we are filling in the username, the password, and then we're logging in. Uh, you can see that we're logged in. Uh, this is just another click. Feel free to automate that as well. This is my Instagram account. By the way, uh, you can follow it. I post a lot of Instagram stories about the life at my RPA office. The account uh, you have to search for is Anas Jensen Org. That's it. But let me log out because we want to do some other nice things. So I just log out of my account. That's it. So if I come back here, now we want to handle these credentials in a secure way. We can choose, choose two things, or the two most common things. That is either the Windows Credential Manager or the UiPath Orchestrator. Both has advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the credential manager. That is always present here on your Windows machine. It's nice because you can use it locally. You don't have to be connected to the orchestrator um, and you don't have to use the assets from there. So what I need to do, I just go to the start menu and then I search for credential manager. I open it, let me drag it in. Go to Windows credentials and here we will create a credential that we can call with our UiPath robot. 
It's stored in a secured way. So click the add generic credential. We will give it a name. My will just be Instagram. Again, this is just a name for reference that it will be the name that you use in UiPath. So just choose a descriptive name. Then we need a username and a password. I will just copy it in here. Soon I can delete my password from this notepad file and feel good again. Then I click OK. We have now created it. We can see here Instagram and we can now call it from UiPath. So if I go back, I can now uh, use uh, an activity called Get Secure Credential. And to, to find that uh, activity, go to Manage Packages. Click All Packages and then search for UiPath Credential Activities. So if I search for Credentials Activities here, mark it, click Install, click Save. And we have now installed the credentials activities. So now we can call the get secure credential activities. Let me show you. I search for get secure credentials. And we will uh, do that in the beginning of our automation. Usually this is in our initialization phase. So I just drag in the get secure credential here. What we need is a target. The target, that was the name we called it in the credential manager. Remember, we called it Instagram. So if I go up here and in quotation marks, I'll say Instagram. That's it. This activity that calls this uh, Windows credential and then it produces an output. It produces a username and a password and we will store that into two variables. First, the username. We already had a variable for this, that was str username. So if I just type in str username here, nothing really happens. Uh, you don't see the str username shows up. And if I wrote it out, it will still give us an error. That has a good explanation because this, um, the scope of this str username is only valid inside the do. We will change it. So go down to the type into username, make sure it's blue by clicking it. Go to variables, you can see it's here. Change the scope from do to sequence. That's it. And we can now use it up here without getting an error. So again, in username, str username, it's here. Double click it all, write it out. Then we need the password. The password is, is stored in a secured string. So if I go to password, then I press control K, I type sec and we can call it, uh, we can name it something. Again, uh, you can call it whatever you want. I just want a descriptive name. So I want the variable type first and then the name of that variable. Then I click enter and we have now created the password variable. If I go to variables, you can see here that this is a secure string and it's called sec password. Let's also delete the value from our username. That was the, when we did it before, when we hard coded everything in and close down the variables manager. If I scroll a little bit down, now we can delete this password from uh, the password activity. So if I just delete this, we will now use a secure way of logging in. So click the secure instead of standard here. And we can use the secure string variable. We just got it from the get secure credentials up here. So I'll just say SEC password. That's it. So now we have created a secure automation that stores our Windows, uh, that stores our Instagram credentials in a nice way that you can access as an outcomer. So if I close down the browser and try to run the automation again to verify that it works. Let us run it. It should run in the background here. That's it. Let's see if it actually worked. That's it. We logged in. Let me log out again because I want to show you another way that might be more common way. We will use the orchestrator with the assets. Orchestrator is built in in the UiPath suite and it lets you handle a lot of things such as asset and asset this just could just be a credential. It could also be a path. It could be a variable that that holds a value or a name that holds a, a variable uh, holds a value. Sorry. So if I log out again, I'm logged out. Go back to UiPath. Now we will uh, use the orchestrator assets. So let me drag in the browser uh, here. Navigate to cloud.uipath.com. If you're not logged in, do so. Click your tenant minus Anders Jensen org. And now we will create an asset. And one thing to remember, I'm in my half year project folder. And you can see here what I can I have uh, some uh, folders and just make sure what project folder you are in and then choose the same in orchestrator. So when you are in my folders, navigate to the correct folder. If you were in the my workspace, that is Anders Anders Jensen org workspace, just do it here. Otherwise I go to half
because I will create my asset in here. So if I click Assets, I can now create an asset that I can call from the UI path. So if I click Add Asset, create a new asset. We will start by giving it a name. And again, we will call ours Instagram. The type, that will be the credential. And you can see a username and password shows up. So we are just going to copy paste it again. We are very lazy as automation developers. By the way, if this video helps you, you can help me a lot by giving it a thumbs up. That will help both me and my channel. Thank you. So then I paste in the password. Then I click create. A cool thing now is that I cannot access the password. So if I go click the three dots here, I click edit. The password is simply not visible. That's nice. We have stored it in a secured way. So I just click cancel because now we will call this from our UI path automation. So I go back to studio. Instead of get secure credential, we will search for a get credential. This is standard in the UiPath package. It's here. We will let this be in for a few seconds and then we'll delete this as well. I'll just drag in the get credential. Here we will need the asset name. The asset name that was just the Instagram from down here. So I copy this one here and then I paste it in up here. So uh, this was because we called, uh, we called it Instagram in the credential manager and we also call it Instagram in the orchestrator. That's uh, why we are naming it the same. We can now uh, delete this get secure credentials. We will get our credential from orchestrator. Orchestrator, uh, the activity also stored the two uh, credential things, the username and password in two variables. We created variables for just that. So over here in username, simply just type in str username, like here. And in the password, that will, will be a secure string as well. So that will be sec password. This automation can now run. Let us again close the Microsoft Edge browser and see that we actually have uh, solved the task with credential handling in a nice and secure way. So it is running in the background. Let us see if we have actually logged into Instagram. That's it. We have logged into Instagram and feel free to follow my Instagram account on anasjensen.org. I post a lot of stories about the life in my RPA office. YouTube thinks that you should watch this video in the middle, so click it and see if they are right.